What's going on? It's Brandon the Provider. It's Tevin Facey. And this is the Millionaire Essentials Podcast. Yes, sir. What's up, Tev? How you been, man? Nothing, man. You know, just came back. Just came back from Philly. Had a, had a nice weekend in Philly. So, you know, we back in New York now. And you had a great event in Philly. That, that was that was a great event, man. Yeah, that, that was a great event, for sure. You know, we were able to speak at that event. So, you know, it's an amazing time, man. It's exactly, time. exactly. Um, the weather's turning. You know, we are in New York. The weather's turning. It's getting nice out. People yep. coming back outside. People can stop, finally wear their Tims. Bro, it was, at one point, it was a little bit too cold to wear Tims. If y'all know what Tims do, it ain't How is cold it weather. too cold to wear Tims? Bro, bro. Tims aren't for, for, for cold weather. I can tell you that. Tims is for, like, the, the mid-fall, like, the mid-spring. That's what the Tims is for. Tims are not for... See, this Winter. is some this is some this is some brother talk right here, some black people talk. Tim's is not for the cold. Wow. <laughs> Tim's is anyway, not- <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly why he said he didn't make it for us. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> listen, man, there's a lot of things going on in the news, in the world. The banks is closing every time you turn, another bank is shutting down. But um banks are being bought out too. Banks are being bought out. Like anytime there's a downturn in the economy, billionaires are made. We always tell you, billionaires, multimillionaires, trillionaires are made. Yeah. As banks are closing, people are buying the banks. And what do yes, you think sir. they're gonna have? It's gonna happen in the next five to ten years. Hey man, there's a lot happening, especially like like I said, with banks being bought out. Um, HSBC, you know, they're not open over here, but uh, overseas they are very big and very popular. So you know, with them even bailing out a couple of banks. Like that that's major, right? Um, and, and that's that's something to keep in mind for the economy for sure. Uh but I, I don't know, man. Like what the what is it? Signature, First Republic, Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley's being bought right now. Yes. Um they said for a dollar. I think that's what they said for why, a dollar. Why why we ain't putting our bid? You know what? It's cause we ain't have a Euro dollar. They said the US dollar ain't nothing no more. You so, ain't hear about the Brazil so, joint? Just to keep your mind, right? They saying it's being bought for a dollar, right? But that doesn't mean it's actually being bought for a dollar. Yes. If I'm correct, they're taking on their debt, right? Taking on all their debt and assets. So that's the strategy. They're buying debt. Mm-hmm. So there are companies out there that buy debt. Yep. And by buying debt, you can actually make a large amount of money off of it. There's different ways you can make money off of buying debt. Mm-hmm. Collection companies, they buy debt. Yeah. Every day. Every day they buy debt. So now, when collection companies, right, when they buy debt, right, what's what's the reason for buying debt? So, I, and and this is just you know my understanding and um, my to my knowledge, a lot of collection companies, or not only just collection companies, but mortgage companies, they buy debt on purpose because you're assuming either for a mortgage companies, you're assuming the asset because now if anything or any default is to happen, they can assume that property, mm-hmm. which and then in turn sell the property for a profit. But when it comes to collection companies, when they're buying that debt, they're buying it because they're looking to get paid back in the form of what they purchased the debt for, right? So they're not buying a debt at the same amount that you owe. I can tell you that. If you exactly. owe $1,000, they ain't buying a debt for $1,000. They're they buying, buying it for a hundred, hundred? For $100, $200. They're they buying it for pennies on the dollar at this point so that they can come back and make their money based upon you know them saying that they're a debt collector. Anything you do and say will be obtained to... Collect the debt, you know, all that good stuff they they call y'all with. In short, right? So the reason why they buy a debt, right? So say you got a collection and goes into a charge off, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Now you have a charge off on your profile. The the debt is charged off. That means the company or the lender already got paid for that debt, right? Mm -hmm. So now they get paid for that debt already. Then they could sell it for a super discounted price to a company that's buying the debt. Now the debt is already charged off. So now the company that bought the debt for a super discounted price, now once they get past the money they already bought it for, $100, $200, yeah. now it's just house money. Right. Now it's just nothing but profit. Nothing and the debt is already charged off. Yeah. And as they bought that debt, they can write that debt off, correct? Yeah. Yes, sir. So it's a write-off for them and they're making That's, money on top that, of it. A 1099K, if I believe? Um. Yeah, I think I think so. I think so. I, I, I'm not into the, the taxes Heavily, but I think it's a 1099K if I, if I was correct. So that's why, like, if you guys get, like, a lot of times a collection agency will hit you guys up and you owe 10000 but they can settle for 5000 Yeah. For half the money. Of course. Why do you think that is? They bought that debt for five. That boy has been circulated. In, that, that debt has been paid off and circulated and people done got paid for that debt already. Mm-hmm. Now they can settle for less and still make money. 
Bro, they they bought it for five hundred. Your first three payments covered they they the initial payment on the damn bill that they <laughs> bought from you. So then now everything else is just straight money. So yeah, collect, collection companies they've been making money for a long that's time. That's actually that's actually uh something people can make money of. That's actually a business buying debt, yeah, assuming debt, buying that's debts, a business, assuming uh, mortgage notes, assuming um, notes, period, assuming yeah, notes, non-performing notes, things like that. Because non-performing, right? Obviously, it's in the name. The, the the borrower isn't performing. They're not purchasing. Not, I mean, they're not making their payments towards that note. So when it comes down to you know basically understanding that you're getting the asset, that's what's important. The assets what's important. So when you're purchasing a non-performing note and you get the asset, that's what's important about the note. It's not really whether or not the person's paying or whether or not you can you know get somebody else to to um to basically sign for the note so that they make the payments is that you're getting that asset. And then also something that um, I read from a book uh, called Non-Performing Notes. Basically, Coincidentally. No, that, that's, re- <laughs> that's the name of the really book, the right? Of the book. Yeah, that's the name of the book, right? <laughs> <laughs> but nah, so um, the first 11 years of any bank note is actually the prime years of a bank note. Mm. So they, they know that mm. a borrower in, in the first 11 years will make their payments no matter what. So that's we need to be looking at our amortization schedules, right? Exactly. Say that three times fast, amortization mm-hmm. schedule, amortization schedule. You really said it. That's crazy. <laughs> we just going to move on from that. So like I was saying about the notes. <laughs> and so that's why, that's, that's another good thing to bring up, right? So whenever you guys get any installment loan, a car, a house, a student loan, look at your amortization schedule. Mm-hmm. That gives you the breakdown of, of all your payments for the next 10, 20, 30 years, yep. all the interest that's going to be accrued and collected and everything you're going to be paying. So you could cut that down. You could pay, you could double up and pay towards principal mm-hmm. to cut down your um your amount of years that you're going to have to pay. Like as many different ways to do that, to pay it off early or to, you know, just change your amortization schedule. Right. And, 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 and something else that was also very important with what you're saying those first 11 years, right? The reason why it's so important to anybody purchasing a non-performing note is because- Got to know you, where you're at. Not, not only just that, when you purchase a non-performing note, right? So let's say the note costs, it, well, the, the the mortgage note was at 300,000, right? That's the original balance, but you bought the note for 250,000. Yeah. With you buying a note for 250,000, you can actually sell those first 11 years for its own portion. So meaning- mm. If you paid already two hundred and fifty thousand, you can sell a hundred and seventy five thousand of that note to the to another uh, another basically note purchaser, and they will assume those first eleven years of payments because they know that if a, if a borrower defaults in those first eleven years, that's all them. Like they they'll get a prop mm. they'll get a property that's worth more than the hundred and seventy five thousand that they paid. If not, then they're just gonna keep collecting on their mortgage note, which is gonna work be worth more than hundred and seventy five thousand. So it's like a whole science to it. Like I, I that that book was wow, that book was pretty that's amazing. So, interesting. Not, so that so that br- that brings up the topic. Um is is it good to get into real estate now? Like what industries are is it good to get into right now? I like I like real estate right now, right? And the reason why I say that is, and you said it just earlier, right? This is the this is the period that billionaires, millionaires are really made, just yeah. because of the amount of probably foreclosures that's coming up, right? Um, the amount of uh, people that can't pay their mortgage or p- can't pay their taxes or their water bills or something like that, you know, when it comes to basically the um the township, right? Because then yeah. you can take over based upon that. Um, I think right now is a really good time to get into the real estate game, right? And the reason why I say that is because fix and flips are at an all-time high, but it's not because they're actually flipping. It's because they're just doing the refinance and holding on to the property. Yeah. So, like, I and I saw a study come out about that just recently. Like, with it being so high and people really understanding how to fix these houses and refinance them instead of just flipping them, you know, flipping is a second option at this point. Yeah. But before, flipping would be a first option, right? So, Flipping is a second option. Refinancing is a first. And with the rates going down just a little bit, it's not as high as it used to be. It's not at that six or seven. It's like four or five now. The refinance seems like the, the better option. So, I mean, I, I think right now real estate is still a good. Refi or HELOC? I would do a refi if it's a hard money. Refi or HELOC? If it's a hard money. <laughs> if it's a hard money, you have to I'm do refi. Yeah, okay. Yeah, if it's okay. a hard money, I'm refi. So that's 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 very important. If it's a refi, I mean, if it's a, if it's a hard money, I'm refining for sure. But if it's not a hard money, and a regular mortgage, I'm doing a HELOC all day. 
Got you. Doing a HELOC all day. Well, what about you? What do, what do you think? Because I know you used to be in real estate heavy. So it What's depends it on your strategy. So I think real estate is always a get in depending on what your strategy is. Right. Some Depending on what the market is, you just have to switch strategies. Yeah. If it's not a flipper's market, you got to stop flipping and start holding. Right. If if it's not a you know a holders if it's not a market to hold you got to start flipping, um, if you're in a place where you get heavy cash flow, um, you know start doing some short term rentals. Mm-hmm. Then if the short term rentals is dry when like during COVID, long term rentals. You right. know what I'm saying? You get the government money. So it's just different strategies. Exactly. That's how exactly. that's how I look at it. Yeah, man. Yeah, I I, I think right now it's just yeah, like you said, just really focus on what your strategy is going to be. You know, even if you gonna get funding, whether it be from us or somebody else understand that like you have to have a strategy first right you always say have a plan first what is your plan absolutely because that you know that's that's big with brandon brandon says you got to have a plan in order for you to get the money or not in order for you but at least for you to understand what you're getting the money for and i think that's something that a lot of people are not talking about right starting business plans so i think nowadays for the general public right we're not talking about high level entrepreneurs right now for the general public that's like a lost art. A lot of people are getting into business without a plan, Correct. without knowing numbers, without a, a, a 12 month, five year plan. Definitely forget about 10 year plan. Without a 12 month to five year plan, right. a one to three year plan, people right. are not planning. You're not writing down numbers. You're not working on getting employees. You're not working on scaling. You're just getting in business. You're going on YouTube, YouTube University, which is not bad, but a lot of people get lost after that. They're not leveling up beyond that. Right. Um, they're not creating plans to sustain and build. So I think that's a lost art nowadays. You guys got to start planning to scale. As soon as you start your business, develop a plan to scale. In 12 months, how much money you want to be making compared to the next 24 months compared to 36 months. And how you plan to scale from making X amount of dollars times 10 than times 20. Yeah. No, I mean... Most people don't have that, so you know. Um, I think there's there's a couple there's a couple places out there that can even help you develop a business plan. I know my entrepreneurial works. Um, you can look them up online. Um, they Udemy have a business plan, huh? Udemy, U D E. Yeah, Udemy. Yeah. Um, they got a business plan template. So so does Udemy. Um, Udemy. 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 Yeah, you say Udemy. 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 We just gonna move on. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> it's Udemy, bro. We was just talking about this. We're not gonna do this. We don't speak correctly, bro. Oh, so are we you wanna you wanna touch on this topic we right now? We don't speak correctly. I know we don't speak correctly. All right, so you know what? We back on this AI conversation. So me and Brandon were talking about the AI. Brandon's over the AIs at this point. At yeah, this no, point. It, it didn't take it didn't take long for me. <laughs> it's getting annoying now. Brandon, Brandon's over the AI. There's too much props coming out. Chat GPT four five six twenty seven like at this point is Brad. Is I hate, I hate when Google. you learn one. Then next week, oh now this it's like PlayStation it's not even one. Next week. Your PlayStation two is out now. Your PlayStation three just came out. Yo, I just I'm still on PlayStation one. Like, <laughs> like it's, it's getting the, annoying. It's for the fast learners. It's cool. We know you slow a little bit, but exactly but the whole the whole point about it was that we were talking about like now and I and this is something that's very new. They have something called prompt engineers, right? So. You know what? I don't even want to explain it that what I'm saying is is correct. But what I read was that prompts are basically the types of prompts that are put into chat GPT for or Brad so that they can spit out the correct response or the correct task that you're looking for for that specific AI. to Exactly. Do. All right. Now that you broke that down. OK. You heard you just said, right? Yes. A normal person. That has no education or higher learning cannot say, I'm going to break down the right stuff for you to say correctly and transition it correctly and get the message across correctly. If you haven't studied speech, you haven't studied um, English, you haven't studied vocabulary and you just haven't studied on how to like break things down. That's learning. That's higher education. You can't say the known person off the street is just going to that speak like how we speak. That's from these urban areas is just going to know how to do that just day one, day two, day three. But why do you think so? Is it just because of higher learning? Yes, because that's that's something you have to learn just every day. How we, just how we speak on a regular. It's a, we, we have habits that we don't even notice. No, I Just know how we, we speak and, and say things. And if you replay a Zoom that you did, then I, you replay a Zoom <laughs> from like, let's just say an English professor. You can see how you talk and how they talk, how they express things and break things down and how you do it. We don't do it in the correct fashion to teach a lot of times unless we start working on it and learning it. That's why there's speech classes, there's vocal classes. 
There's classes to te- teach you how to that that we need to take to teach you how to talk on stage. So, and that takes years actually of learning. So, with all of that being said, right? So you're saying that a higher learning is needed. Yes, absolutely. In order for you to get paid three hundred and thirty thousand dollars to tell an AI to yes to do a yes. specific task by properly saying it. Not a specific task, exactly what you just broke down. Exactly what you just broke down, that's higher learning. That's not just somebody off the street that just could talk. And we all could talk, but do we do it properly? Do we express thoughts properly? No, we all, no, we don't. The majority of us don't. I know you don't. We but both go back and forth about each other, about breaking things down. It, it, yo, why you ain't tell me this? Why you ain't tell me this? It, it happens. All right, you got, you got a point there. All right, but still, but still, no, I'm, 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 not, I'm not letting you win this. What I'm saying I'm is with it, a, soft, I'm with a, software, it right a software engineer gets paid about 150 to about 200 maybe 250,000 if they're at the top of their tier. Okay. Right? And that's learning high level coding like Python, uh JSS, okay. uh CSS3, okay. uh, a bunch of stuff that you probably don't know. But when it comes down to a prompt engineer. Okay. How does that differ? I'm not even how does that differ? How do you get paid more for something that you, like you're not even uh, really specifying in a code I'm, what to I'm, do. I'm gonna break. I'm gonna break it down, right? Because number one, it's because you paid 150 thousand for college. Is that what it is? No, number one. Oh, so you need to pay the 150 thousand back based upon the 330 thousand dollar salary that you are gonna get. So based upon these the companies play the long term game too. Number one, this person is not gonna ask for any raise or increase for the next 10, 20 years. At How all. you know that? Okay. But how do you this know that? This person is this this machine. Now nah, I'm saying person. My bad. I said person. But this wait, machine. You don't wait. need to give it a raise. But the, you don't need to give it benefits. The so, machine needs the prompt. You're right. They need the prompt. So the person has to stay around. The three hundred thirty thousand dollar person that's getting paid has to stay around. And so order wait, for- who's getting paid? What? I thought you said say that one more time. The prompt engineer. The prompt engineer is not a is not an AI. That's a oh, person. Oh, I thought you were talking about an, an AI. No, this is a person oh. that, because an AI only works based upon what we yeah, ask. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were right? talking about a person. No, a prompt I mean, engineer. A, a, a AI. No, a prompt engineer is a person. Okay. Does this change now, your whole now, answer? No, no, it doesn't yeah, change my answer. I'm about to it win. It doesn't change my answer. Whatever this I just got confused on what you're saying. Is, I'm about to win it. Go ahead. It doesn't change my answer. How does it not change your answer? So. The uh-huh. prompt engineer is in charge of the Go AI, ahead. right? Where, yeah. So he has a more important job, period. He has a more important job, period. He has a more important job, bro. That's what your comeback was? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yo, yes. <laughs> he has a more important job. <laughs> yes. All right. So yes. two for Tevin and zero for No, Brandon. he has a more nah, important cool. job. He has cool. a more important I got, job. I got that. I won that one. He has a more important job, bro. All right. So, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> that's your comeback. Yeah. No, yes. it's cool. Yes. It's cool. It's cool. So that's like saying that's like saying that we married and you got a kid and I'm and because I'm so much better at telling the kid what to do, that kid should become my son. What you just said is retarded. No, you um, want to know why I said that? Because it's a segue. What you because, just said. That- because it's a segue to if if you I, I saw something recently where a, a, a husband and wife got married and the wife had her own child and the husband actually adopted her child, you know, with them being in marriage yeah. and they were married for like five, seven years. And the husband actually adopted her child. Now she's asking for a divorce and child support after she adopted, after he adopted her child. By, by law, that's the laws we live under. That's the laws we live under. That's crazy, man. That's the laws we live under. I don't like your responses today. That's the laws we live under, bro. Like what do you? What do you? Man. I don't. I don't know, man. That's the laws we live live under. Yeah, like go, I said, this go is to your the local Tevin, councilman. This is the Tevin podcast at this point. Go to your local councilman. So look, go to your go to your local mayor. Conspiracy and start, theory. Start getting these. Uh, this is the problem, right? Uh huh. How many times you voted this year? Or the, during the during election times, like how many times do you vote? Uh, well, this year I voted for 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 Senate, um, for Long Island. I voted for. He don't live in Long Island. This guy lives in New Jersey. Actually, I do. Oh, okay. I have a house there. I actually, I think I only voted once. Okay, okay, that's the problem, right? 
most of us do not partake in the majority of our elections. Wait, hold up. Before you, when, how many times you voted this year? I, know, I definitely don't partake in elections. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not going to sit there and lie. No, I don't. I definitely don't. Go ahead. With your, your, your I definitely don't. Go ahead. With your most of us don't partake, partake. But I don't complain. That's what I'm saying. I don't complain. Oh, so okay. when I see laws pass, I don't complain. I say, oh, that's that's, that's my fault. Yeah. I didn't vote. Yeah. I, I I'm fully I'm fully aware and I understand the consequences of what I have to live, live under because I'm not partaking. But a lot of people are complaining and I'll say, yo, how many, who'd you vote for? I didn't vote. So you're complaining and you didn't even try to alter or you didn't do anything to try to get the law in your favor or which, which you want it to be. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't create no rallies. You didn't create no parties. You ain't campaign for what you think is fair, but you just sit back and say, yo, why, yo, that's not fair. Why are they doing this? No, that's what you, but do you think that's, Alterable? That's a word. I think that's a word. I don't think that's a word, but um, let's go with it. Do you think it's that's able to be altered? Right? You just said English. We don't know nothing about English. Every right. every exactly <laughs> exactly. And they want to have you paying you, yeah, off the street. Yo, come come do these prompts. People gonna be playing chat chat GBT alterable. They <laughs> nah, they can't have no regular person doing that, bro. <laughs> they need that joint to be accurate as hell. You have to train somebody. So what, hold up, hold up. Can that be altered though? Um, I, I, can it be Do altered believe, fairly? Do you believe it can be? altered? No, it could be absolutely be altered. Now, if we talking fair or not fair, it could. We say, the elections. Reason, the reason why I say that, if I come with another million dollars, I get a law change. What are you up. talking about? <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on, because you got to think about this. We have as this sounds crazy. I just want to let y'all know we are not misogynistic at all because this sounds crazy. What I'm about to say. There are more seats of men filling those seats in the Senate. And council, uh, council, uh, what is it? Councilmen's in any specific um, county or state or uh, uh, local level, right? There's usually more men than there is women. How? And I'm not saying, ah, damn, this does sound. And I'm not even gonna move on. So, what are you saying about that other topic? No, say what you gonna say. <laughs> because it, because right now it, it is gonna sound a little misogynistic. If and I'm not and I'm not sure if it's fair, right? And I'm only saying this to be more of a devil advocate. I think that that might help me to be a devil advocate, right? If damn, I'm really trying to put this the right way. If there's more men in 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 those seats, right? But all the time when a woman leaves a man based upon whatever, but yet she still wants child support and they have to pay an obscene amount. Like twenty thousand a month for child support, but child not even so, doing all of that. So you know the point. Number one, we're not supposed to pay child support. That's number one. But we're not going to break that down just yet. Yeah, you are. No, num- you number two, consumer law for real. Yeah, yeah. Num- <laughs> number two, I thought I was. And I don't mean that to be on. misogynistic. I'm just nah, going by law. It. I'm just going by law. Number two, put it on somebody else. the only point of child support is for the, for the people not to collect the government money. That's why that's set up. It's not to care about the woman. No, they don't want that kid on government money. So they make the man pay. That's the only point and why the child support laws are so strict. They want that man to pay whether it's his or not, whether you claim it or not. No, you're going to pay for this because the government's not paying for it. That's the only point of child support, bro. That's crazy. That's the only point. Why do you think the laws are so strict and men paying? They don't care if it's yours or not. They don't care if you want it or not. They don't care none of that. You're going to pay. Yeah, you said that. You said, uh, and it was a story that came out that um, even even somebody's kid Even if you find out it's not theirs, but you've been there for X amount of time, you have to pay. That's good. Now, different states have different laws. Right, of course. Different states. Abortion laws and all that stuff is different in every single state. But that's the point. They don't care about the women, yo. They just don't want the government to pay. So it don't matter about yeah, more men. It's about the government money. So that's what that point is, right? Um, and the other point as far as whether it's, oh, we were talking about the voting. Mm-hmm. The rules and the reason why it's more men, more white men in, in the Senate, Supreme Court, all of those courts, all of those justices, all of those. Um, oh, you about to take us out of here? Nah. Go ahead. The reason why it's, it's, here, it's, it's more men Dude, we about to blow up. is because they live by the old rules and it's more white men. Okay. It's more older white men. They're uh-huh. all in their 60s, 70s, 80s. And they hold these seats for years and years and years. And that's how America's set up. Ah, oh, damn. I think he's about to take us out of here. Look, no. what he what he what he not saying is that they they ain't baby fathers like a lot of us are. 
I think that's what he tried no, not to say. No. So I, not, we still got to pay saying. that child support because a lot of times with our baby father. Is that what you trying to say? No, that's not what I was saying. That's what you're saying. Oh, okay. Oh, I wish I would put that on you then. Yes, he was. Okay. Anyways, y'all. Look, other other than just that, right? Other than just seeing a lot of that, those type of different, what am I, I'm saying? The, 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 the news that it touches on your heartstrings a little bit because it kind of did touch on me because I'm like, how did you, like, how could you be with somebody for so long? You adopt their child, and then after you divorce, they're asking you for child support. But that's, like, with the whole thing with the marriage, too, but right? That's, that's that's a touchy subject because who right and who wrong? Why, why wouldn't you? I don't want to get too deep into that because if you've been with them that long and you take care of that child. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? You know what I'm saying? Why would you, why would you leave cold feet? You just going to leave them out there? You know what, what I'm saying? What, but what if the person is? What if the person already has a job? What if they have their own company? What if they have all that money that they? So can what? Do so so you just leave them cold feet? That you that was your child. Let's just say that was your child. You was taking care of it for however long, and they're calling you daddy. So is he doesn't have a duty? All right. I didn't hold up. Hold up. I didn't you didn't think it. about that, right? No, nah, I didn't say all that. See why you asking me questions? That oh, yeah, come well, on, he get bro. the motion now. Nah, you wild. But um, nah, that that is that is kind of crazy. Nah, so that that brings up right, that brings up the topic. Um, just in everyday society, right? So now we see people. Some people come from two parent households. Some people come from one parent households. Right? right? Is it? Do you feel it's a difference between a child being raised with a mother? Oh, uh, that's this is the hold on, hold on, this this the Dion effect right here. Do you feel Go it's ahead. a difference between a child? being raised with a mother than a child being raised with a single father a single mother or a single father is there differences do you think i could say it. i could say because um so my mom passed away when i was 14 and with my dad raising me for that period of time well my dad and my brother basically raising me for that period of time yeah is there was difference there was a there's a big difference just in that small amount of time from from one to fourteen, with my mom and dad being there, and from fourteen to eighteen, bruh, four years compared to fourteen, it was a big difference. I can say that it was a big difference, and there, that's absolutely true. I can say that I, without, but without hold mentioning on, but too hold many on. details. But you, you, didn't, you, you, didn't, you wasn't true. raised just by your mother together, right? It was your mother and your father. Yeah, it was my mother and my. So father. you still in? I right, so, but you never got the experience of I right, just your mother or just your father. Yeah, I never had that experience. All right, so that's the difference. That's what I'm asking. Is there a difference between just a mother raising a child, a child and just a father, a father raising a child from, from day one? I think there is. I think there is. And the reason why I say that is because, um, and just within those four little years that I was being raised just by my, my dad and my brother, it was more of like, like nah, bro, you got to do this yourself. Or it's like more independent. Yeah, uh, ten times more. Like I grew up fast as hell. Um, I, I I really learned how to do stuff for myself. I got a job early. Like I like all those stuff. I probably wouldn't have to have done if he wasn't nurtured. Yeah, but it wasn't even more so nurtured. It was just like because we ain't we didn't grow up with much anyways. So you know we we grew up in like the Rosedale area, and it wasn't a lot like at all and. I mean, if you, if you really know New York, you know, that's that area had a lot of, you know, gangs in it. So the area just was poverty stricken a, a little bit, not as much as a lot of other areas, but it was poverty stricken a little bit. But we didn't live in in a in a house. We lived in a, a small apartment, things like that, sharing bedrooms and stuff. And, you know, I, I guess I'm getting away from the point. What I'm trying to say is. Yes, when your mother raises you as as you're a, a boy. Um, compared to a girl, is different because they want to nurture you and take you to, you know, understand that, you know, the world is different for you compared to what a girl, but then it's also goes, it goes uh, opposite way around, right? Your dad raising you as a son coming up from young and uh, uh, his daughter coming up from young is two different things because now, you know, he doesn't want her to get outside too fast because, you know, he just wants to coddle her a little bit more, but not a dad raising a son, yo, go outside, do what you're doing. Come back, make sure you come back in curfew. And I, I think like everybody, especially in this generation, what is this, Generation Z? What they call them? 
Whatever alphabet they Man, ain't you for you that's you generation Z, ain't you? No, I'm not. Ain't bro. you generation don't, Z, bro? Don't, don't you do that. Um yeah. I think <laughs> I think a lot of them is just coddled and just just over oversensitive, too coddled, too just not too dependent. Don't understand. I think they're how too to, dependent. To relay their emotions properly neither. And that's I why that's why it's a lot of what just happened. School shooting. That's crazy that we both said that, yeah. And and I'm in my in you. my opinion, this is my opinion. Mm-hmm. I think that's people are oversensitive. What the school shootings? The shooters. Shooter. I think the shooters don't understand how to relay their emotions properly. Yeah, that's so, oversensitive. No, I, they're oversensitive, could, yeah, it could, it could be, they're oversensitive, bro. They're oversensitive, bro. Both. Though. I, I get mad. I want to come shoot up the school. That's what it is, bro. No, I don't think it's get mad. I want to shoot up the school. I think they're not heard properly. And, and this and this is this is this is an unpopular opinion, right? It's a super unpopular opinion, and oh, yeah, and I hate I hate the one? way I hate the we way out of here on this the one? direction. Yeah, we out of here on this one. We out of here, y'all. Go ahead. I I agree <laughs> with bullying, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I agree with bullying, bro. Where where Wait. did we go away from a time where where did we go away from a time where if I get punched in the face? I want to come back and shoot up the school. My life is over. You need to get beat up to know how to get back up and become stronger, bro. Now you get punched in the face. Oh, my life is... They bully me. My life is over. I want to shoot them up. Where did we go to... Where Where did we come to that? Yeah, we where we can't, we can't get beat up no more. Where we can't get... We can't get punched in the face no more. That's crazy. I got jumped on Jamaica Ave too. Is- you come back the next day, you got to eat that. You got to deal with that. Definitely do. <laughs> where that's it's what I said. Where did we come away from that time where I, somebody jokes on us? I'm being bullied. You can't joke back. And, so that's what comes to building yourself up mentally. And I think, and you know what? You want to know what's crazy? Now that's just my that's some popular opinion about me. I'm now. sorry. Hold on. Now I'm here. Now I'm hold sorry. On, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Because that that's that's now that I think about it. If I think back to it, like right, and, I, and I'm putting myself in this predicament. When I got jumped, and my my dad and brother <clears> hurt, like I told him, it was like all right. He, you see one, you you know what time it is. <laughs> like, so this is what I'm saying. Where did we go away from the time? And that's where, what I'm saying. Like if it, especially kids nowadays, like even being in the put hood, put some ice on it, go home, go to sleep, bro. Damn, it's you long hey, days. You know what I'm saying? Kids nowadays, that's that's in like even in the hood or or in those type of urban neighborhoods, they be like, nah, I gotta jump. Now nah, I gotta go air it all out. That's oversensitive, bro. That's how I look at it. Like, just I just in, in, in the hood, like people that people that's locked up doing all these years is because they did something they didn't need to do over overreacting. Right. Somebody stepped in my shoe. Somebody bumped me. I had a fight, so I killed the person. I stabbed the person. Ego. Somebody slept my girl. I shot the house up. Ego. That's over. That's being oversensitive, overreacting. Right. So you got to be more in control with your emotions. These people that are shooting up these schools, they're oversensitive. They're overreacting. They think they're getting picked on. They said they said it, I don't know. They said it was a transgender person. She probably could have began names called or could could have began bullied. I don't know. And I don't agree with that because she shot up. But no, that that's a bad excuse yeah, she because she shot, shot up a, a kids, kid's school. Yeah, so that's no. I'm school. sorry. That's a bad excuse. But um, I don't know what it is. But I think people can't take, especially online. People criticism. take everything. People can't take criticism. Now, I'm going to say criticism. People can't take being name called, being picked on. And you don't have to take it, but it shouldn't make you go to that next level of overreacting. Right. I think people need to be stronger mentally. Like, you don't like what's going on, so turn it off. They don't realize you could turn your phone on and off. So when they get on Twitter and they see all this stuff, you can unsubscribe. You control that. So I don't, I don't get the psyche that oh, this person made fun of me. They're um, what do they call it when you bully somebody online? Cyberbullying. They're cyberbullying. How can somebody cyberbully if you could choose not to see them? <laughs> you can choose unfollow block. Oh, yeah, How we, could somebody cyberbully you? You can here. turn it off. <laughs> How can somebody cyberbully <laughs> you when you can turn off the system? <laughs> Look, yeah, <laughs> I can. I, I don't understand that, Thank bro. You for the first and last time, listeners. More so, the last time, listeners. Look, I I'm appreciate sorry, y'all man. for sure. This might be the last podcast, but you know, and I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But oh my god, no. But I, 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 I think it's as, just as much as as much as I do want to be out there. I do. I do kind of. I agree with you. I do agree with you because, like, 
we got to really learn how to get up. And I think that goes back to the conversation we had, like, I think episode two, where we were talking about, like, a lot of people don't want to put in that hard work no more. No, it's the parents' fault. That, that's what I'm blaming. No. It's the parents' fault, bro. It's the parents' fault. This starts from young. I didn't expect that. Go ahead. It's the parents' fault, bro. It's it start, this starts from young. Okay. So... A lot of things that's instilled us as young, right? Once we get older and of adulthood, now it's our job to say, "Oh, I don't. I'm. You don't have to do what so called your parents were taught. How so called you were raised at a certain age. Now, once you're on your own, you can start transforming some of them paradigms and start changing. And once you start learning the world, you can start changing and reacting differently. Right. But when you're a child, a lot of things are instilled in you by your parents. That don't mean they're right or wrong, but that's how they're raising you. So a lot of kids are oversensitive, over coddled, over um So you think this you think this stems back to the parents? Yes, absolutely. So even even the non bullying, even the them being oversensitive just about shooting places up, like you think that all stems back to the parents? So absolutely. And this is why. Um number one, for your for your ch- I'm talking about the kid the kid shooters, right? Because there there are a lot of sh- shooters that were kids. Yes. Or young. For you not to know, um, and this is obvious, I think, for you not to know your son has three, four, five guns in the house, that's that's 1,000% on the parents. For you not to know what your son or daughter is thinking, you're not tapped in enough. You're, if you don't know what's going on at school that they're getting picked on, you're not tapped in enough. Right. You know what I'm saying? But that be that could be because of poverty. That could be because they have to work two, three jobs. You're right. So I, there's I, not I, enough money circulating inside of the, the black communities or urban communities or just communities in general because it ain't just, you know, it ain't just us at this and, point. And unpopular opinion. Oh, yeah. Unpopular we opinion. Again, y'all. We out of here. This, this, episode, this episode. Whose fault it is that they got to work two or three jobs? You got the clip? You got the clip? To, <laughs> oh, so you the shooter. Who, who, whose fault it is that they got to work two or three jobs? Whose fault is it? It's theirs. It's their fault. Yo, we really out of it. Like, like we I said. Could, we, we, hold on, hold on, hold on. Am I wrong? Because <laughs> you, you scared to talk today. Am I wrong? It's first time and last time listeners. I appreciate y'all. Look, I just want to let y'all know. Am I, I wrong? Y'all from now. I, I'm not saying you not wrong. Am I, no, 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 no. If I'm not wrong, I'm not wrong. You can stop right there. No, no, no. But hold but, up. Hold up. Damn, I'm about to pull a you. Don't do no yes and no. Bro, it's, don't do no it's yes a and yes no. and no. Right? The reason why I say that is because you can't... Here come Marcus Garvey. Oh, all right. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Nah, so you can't... You can't... What am what I going to say? I, you can't guarantee an education for everybody. And that, that comes from also funding when it comes to going to college, right? Because obviously, college, college doesn't need to be the only place that you need to go to in order for you to get a, a, a quality paying job. You can have a high school diploma and go to a trade school or you can uh, have a high school diploma and go to a software developing school you can go to high school diploma and, and go multiple different places that you can now create and get jobs for yourselves the reason why i say funding could be an aspect of that and not enough dollars circulating inside of the community and not enough dollars being given to our people not us understanding about credit like i think it's a wide range of different spectrum of, of answers that can be given on why that like it's, that's not the case. You get what I'm saying? If <clears throat> now this is what I talk about paradigms, right? If you work in two oh, or three jobs, before, before you answer this, you had this queued up. I no. think you've had this queued up for a while. You no. just needed somewhere to no. say it. No, right, I, I just I just no, know how, how to address, to address the topics. Like, this is gonna be top, off the top of your head. If go you ahead. work in two or three jobs, right? Uh huh. Then Brandon Tevin comes along, uh-huh. and we have a program where. You're making you're making five k every three to six months. I see what he did. You're making five k three to six months. You're making five k every month, right? Say so you're just making five k every month. Be disrespectful to our program. Now, no, no, no. I'm saying you you have two or three jobs making five k. Oh, okay, okay. A month. I'm about to say our program, we get you five. You have two or three jobs month. making ten k a month, and we come along with a program where we show you how to build your LLC, build your company to make five ten k per client. You get five clients in a month. That's twenty five k. And we say, yo, to tap into here, it's five thousand dollars. And if you don't have the five thousand dollars, we'll show you how to get funding. And you choose to say no, or you choose to say that's too much money for you. That's your fault. That you're going back to those two or three jobs, and you're struggling to make ends meet, and you're not around for your child. So now you have access to the information, but it's your job when you said no. I'd rather do this, or I don't want to invest, or I don't want to tap into myself and change my situation. Now, if you don't have access to the information, 
I agree. What you don't know is what you don't know. But we're in the age of information. And a lot of people have access, but they choose not to. Subtle plug, y'all. So we have a mentorship in the academy that we can teach you how to get funding and become a funding company. So that's the program that he's talking about. If you if you are ready to learn about some of this information that we're talking about, we have a free training ready for you guys. Um, it'll be in the link below. Uh, in the link below. <coughs> Damn, you really I, that segue was real. That that that's true, bro. That boy hit me with the segue. When you choose segue not to, it's your fault that she, your your child is going to just grow up and have to figure it out themselves and then if they don't figure it out, their their child's going to have to grow up and we're keeping that same stigma. Right. So, it's up to you to say you want to change that stigma. So, that's why I said when they have a choice, bro, they they can How many people we speak to and they decide not to tap in? Or just anything. They end up not tapping into nothing, and then you continue next 10, 20 years on the same old struggle. You talking about 10, 20 years. You talking about the next week they hit you talking about, yo, I got I got all of this personal credit card debt now. It's like, I can't help you now at this point. Because, you know, I've given you the information um, to the point that I can help you, right? And now it's like, you don't want to move forward with us because, you know, you're not entirely sure. Look, the information we're telling you guys, like... It, it's something that you would never learn from, and I'm not, you know, let me not say never. It's something that you won't learn based off of popular opinion, based off of popular information out there, because this is something that's been kept from us for a very long time, right? Banking, the banking industry has been around since what, 1920s? The Banking Act, uh, somewhere around there past. 19, 1920s. So think about that from 1920s all the way to 2023. Like, that's a lot of years. And we only started learning about this stuff, what, due to COVID? Like, a lot of people yeah. really started getting into this game before. Just, before just getting into uh, um, COVID, like financial literacy. Financial literacy like or just more, more streams of income. Yes. Let's go, to, let's go there. Yeah, 2016, 2017, people have started to diversify their income, especially due to COVID, because we, we all saw that one income is little to no income. So we needed to diversify. We needed to learn more. We needed more financial literacy. We needed to know a little bit more about funding. We need to know a little bit more about everything else that can help us to become better. So hence, forget 2023, from 1920 all the way to 2016, 2015, there's still a lot of years. And the fact that we're, able, we're trying to speed up that timeline to get you caught up to speed, I mean, I think it's better. That it be us that tells you that information. So just so for like, um, I think people realize, you know, one stream of income is too close to none, right? Mm -hmm. So when we talk about multiple streams of income, right, it doesn't have to be multiple different businesses. I want y'all to understand that. So like name, name a profession, name a business. Give me a business. Uh, electrician. Electrician, right. So now electrician, now actively, you can have a business being an electrician. So now you can go out and actually fix people's um electricity, right? Mm -hmm. Fix people, go and go out, go, go do do homes and different things of that nature, apartments. Right. So that's one stream, right? Mm -hmm. You can have a company where you employ electricians. Mm -hmm. You hire helpers. You hire other electricians. Yep. You get them on your company, correct? Yes. Because you used to do um kind of right. He was a fake electrician, so he was a fake electrician. So he knows what I'm talking about. Um, that second stream of income, actually building a company and getting passive income, paying employees. You can write a book. You can write a book on being an electrician, right? Helping people how to train to be electricians. <laughs> you have it, bro. Yeah, keep going. You can write an ebook. You can write an ebook. That's uh -huh. three, right? You can have trainings, coaching. Mm -hmm. So that's a that's a course. You could do a course, have coaching or teaching people how to become an electrician, how to do different um projects, whether it's homes, whether it's apartments, whether it's commercial projects. Right. You can throw events. On getting people certified, give them trainings on how to get certified, how to do different things in that nature, how to build their company on being an electrician. That's five. That's five different streams of income you can do just by being an electrician. Fake electrician, yeah. Not like a fake electrician that he was employed by Con Ed. He was a fake electrician. He wasn't like, he didn't, I don't know. What, what you, were you certified? You had to, what, no, what are you I, in? I what, wasn't was you local? What's the electrician you in out here? Local three? No, not, not local three. three. No, I wasn't local three. I not, did it's actually, not local. I, it's local I, three, right? Yeah, I got approved for local three, but I, I didn't go in the local. Yeah. Three. Um. So, yeah, that's five different streams of income of being an electrician you could possibly do, and that's one profession. 
So in their same profession, you could create five different streams of income. Well, since he just broke down to you all those different streams of income, if you want to learn about how you can get a stream of income that will just definitely be recession proof throughout multiple years to come, no matter what's happening, turmoil, bank, it's going down, coming back up, recession, no recession, trust me, click that link below. We definitely be able to help you out. Look, y'all, I think we're going to go ahead and end this episode off. This is Tevin Facey. This is Brandon the Provider. This is the Millionaire Essentials podcast. Um, we got the Funded Poppy. Um, yeah, the Funded Poppy need to go away. I, saw, I, I heard a lot of dudes calling you Funded Poppy. They really say. Like, right? last I week. Go, I ain't going to lie. They were like, hey, Funded Poppy. No, at that, at that, at that uh, event we was at, it sounded crazy. I ain't going yeah, I, I to yeah. I had to kind of switch it up. Nah, you smiling. I had to you, switch I think you like that. Of, of it was like, hey, Funded Poppy. Hey, y'all, listen. I hope you have a great rest of the day. I'll talk to y'all soon. We'll see y'all soon. Peace. Later.